Frank Zappa was a genius, as well as a virtuoso guitar player and composer. I put him up on the musical Mount Rushmore with Bach and Beethoven and Miles Davis. He was known for a lot of different musical inventions or using common chord progressions in very unique ways and adding funny and quirky aspects to his music. I'm only going to go over one of his particular concepts today that he used a lot, and that is the Frank Zappa II chord. At least I call it the Frank Zappa II chord. Now, to get the two chord, we have to know the structure of a major and minor triad. Root, third, and fifth. And below is the root, third, and fifth of a C minor chord. Now, whether it's a major scale or a minor scale that the chord is coming from, the two in this case is going to be a D. So, what we do is we take the third of each of these chords and move it down to the two. So what this does is it takes away the third of the chord, which is the distinguishing characteristic of the major and minor chords here, and now we are left with something that's tonally ambiguous. So now, because this chord is lacking the third, it's now tonally ambiguous, which means we don't have enough information to know if this is C major or minor. So which is it? Why not both? And to understand this, I'm going to write out the C major and C natural minor scales. So here's the C major scale and here's the C natural minor scale. Now check this out. Here's our root, here's the two, and here's the five of the chord. You've got the C, you've got D, and you've got G as far as notes that this chord contains within the scale. Therefore, when you see a C2 chord, you can improvise a melody or compose a melody using C major or C minor, because like I said, it's now tonally ambiguous, so it's not major or minor, it's both. Now let's take a look at C melodic minor or C harmonic minor. So there's C melodic minor, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B. And here is C harmonic minor. All of these scales, the major, the natural minor, the melodic minor, and the harmonic minor all have in common C, D, and G. So this opens up the floodgates for different ways that you can write melodies. You can combine it using modal mixture. You can use any two of these. You could use just one if you want, but to really get the full effect, you need to use more than one. And what if you have a progression of say, C2 to say, A2. Now A2 equals, a, B, and E. Now you can use the C major scale over both C2 and A2, but you can also combine over A2 you can use the C major, but over C2 you can use any of these four. So this is just going to open up a whole lot of different possibilities for you and over one chord, the possibilities are great, but once you start using a lot of uh, two chords in the progressions, as Frank Zappa often did, you have a lot of different melodic possibilities. And this is going to keep you off the streets for a long time, okay? <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of stuff. So I'm going to go over this more in an upcoming uh, episode of Woodshed, where I'm going to actually put this into practice. So until next time, I hope you learned something cool about Frank Zappa, one of my all-time musical heroes, favorite musicians of all time, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.